So our scripture passage for this Thanksgiving service is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who, that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, um, I know I just got back recently from my six weeks in Spain. There was one other time that I went to Europe. Uh, there's only been two times in my life that I've been to Europe. But the other time I went to Europe was in college. I went to Switzerland uh, for a Jan term class. So for two weeks I was in Switzerland and traveled all over Europe while I was there. And um, John and I were dating at that time. And I remember his mother telling me before I left, you're going to be gone for two weeks from John? How are you going to survive? <laughs> she, was, she, she was really trying to talk me out of going, uh, to be honest. She, she continued in the conversation to say, you know, that's going to be hard for you. Are you sure you want to go? I'm like, yeah, I'm already, I really want to go. I'm going to go. And, well, I don't know how John's going to make it with you being gone. And see, there's the truth. She was worried about him. And uh, so while I was gone, I think he came to an awareness that uh, we'd already talked about a lot of things about our life together. But when I got off the plane uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, um, the very first thing I saw when I went through the doors, and back in the day when you could just come right off the plane and, you know, anyone could welcome you there, uh, first thing I saw was, was John, and he was just so excited to see me. And I walked through the door, and he comes right up to me and kneels in front of me. And, uh, you know, there's a whole group of family around and a big crowd. And he kneels in front of me and hands me a wedding ring, an engagement ring. And so, I mean, that was the welcome home. You know, I really missed you. Will you please, please not ever leave me in all my life, you know, kind of moment. And, um, and so it was so incredibly beautiful and, uh, and surprising. And so I had a real great sense of gratitude for the surprise of that. Um, and so today when we're talking about gratitude, I want us to kind of know what we're talking about. First of all, when we think about the good things in our life, we can look at the source of where those good things come from. And a lot of times our reaction might be a sense of pride. Well, I've worked hard for this. You know, I've I'm grateful for my accomplishments. You know, that's one kind of gratitude, but the real kind that we want to focus on today is those, uh, that gratitude that the source is, is a sense of surprise. The, the good things in our life that have a sense of surprise, that bring a sense of wonder, that have a sense of awe around them. I mean, that certainly was that moment for me when John asked me to marry him and such a surprising way. I was so grateful and, um, and, and excited. And gratitude can have that sense about it. So I want you to think about, maybe think about something that's good in your life. And then think about the source. If it is one of those things that's not really something that you you know, you created, really, you put the energy into doing, but that has that kind of um, surprise nature to it and a sense of awe or wonder. Um, I want us to do something really different, and I know it might make some of you uncomfortable, but I ask you please to just try it. Um, just step out of your comfort um, and just give it a try. I want us to share with one another, so find one other person, and I want you to pick that one item that you're, just pick one thing that, you're, uh, that you think is really good in your life, that you have some gra gratefulness about. And I want you to tell that other person five things about that one thing that you're grateful for. 
For example, I am grateful for the rain this morning. That's the one thing. But here are the reasons why I am grateful for the rain. It was a welcome to my morning. I am grateful for the smell of the rain this morning. I am grateful that the rain will bring such snow on the hills. I am grateful that the rain always makes me think of Alabama, because we get so much more rain in Alabama. I am grateful for the way that the rain cools things off. You see how you can take the one thing that you're grateful for and then list all the reasons why. So that's what I would like for you to do with one other person is tell them what you're great what is the one thing and then all the five reasons that you're grateful for. So I'll just give you just a few minutes to pair up with someone um, to do that. Can, do y'all wanna do y'all wanna pair up? Do y'all wanna talk? I'm going to interrupt uh, your sharing time. I'm really grateful that you're sharing with one another. Is there someone that would like to share publicly, you know, what they, one of the things that they're grateful for, um, so we can add to that feeling of sharing? I am grateful for my ability to live in the moment. Sometimes it gets me in trouble time-wise when people come to pick me up. But this morning, I got really involved in my writing, and everything else disappeared. And I consider living in the moment a God-given gift. Do you mind? Um, I'm grateful for uh, two things that are sort of like the same, but, but in different situations. I'm grateful that, um, that I'm a volunteer for hospice and that I sing in a choir at uh, the Central Point Senior Center. And the thing that I like, or some of the things I like about them is that I have two ready-made groups of people that I um, feel close to and that I belong with. And um, I like that they uh, make me, along with the others that are in the same position, we have to, we go out and we are with other people like in the choir, we sing at um, assisted living and other places. We're going to be singing here at the church two times next month. And and I love that we get to see the people that we're singing to, you know, because a lot of them are really have dementia and stuff, and, they, and they're not here in the moment, but they're able to appreciate that we're there for them. Um, I appreciate um, hospice and being able to be with people that, watching them go through the process of, of dying, and that's what we're there for because they're dying, 
but it made me feel less uh, frightened of death and um, just shows you that it's a part of life and that that we get to be with people that they, they go through that and it makes it easier when we're dealing with it with our own family and stuff. That's three. It's probably enough. I'm grateful that um, despite or amongst all the glitz and glamour of this last week and going to Hollywood and wearing a sparkly dress and, you know, um, celebrating uh, music, that there's one thing I'm even more grateful than any of that, and that is that I met some new friends and we connected on such a deep level that I cried. And I, I got, it sounds like a weird thing to be grateful for, but sometimes I'm smiling all the time, and, um, but there's a lot of pain in, in me as well, and I got to, like, just cry. Not only did I get to cry, I couldn't stop crying, and it just all came out, and I feel, like, a lot lighter now, so I'm really grateful for the ability to cry and, and let go of pain. First of all, I'm grateful for the um, memorial service we had yes yesterday for uh, Joan's son who was killed in an auto accident or hit by a car. It, he is, he has been like a homeless and uh, needy person. And you look at someone from the outside and you don't know the depth they are. He had so many friends to give a testimony for him. It went on, I think, what, Linda, for ever. And, and obviously, a lot of them were street people. But they said he was so wonderful, a true friend. He'd give you anything. But secondly, I shared with Tom, last night my world almost ended. <laughs> my two little dogs got out near I-5. No, they're fine. But for 15 minutes, I couldn't find them. And all of you know, the life they are for me. I'm by myself. And a woman took them in. After 15 minutes, I found them. They could have both been killed on I-5. But thank God, they're in my bed with me last night. What are you grateful for? So I'm thankful for my family because they accept me for all of my weird perks. <laughs> Hi, um, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm preaching to the choir, but I love this church. Um, I love the, the safety and the, and the sanctuary and the, the inclusiveness of this church. Um, my friends, um, the, the good works that we're encouraged to do, um, the great times that we have with um, the children's ministry. Um, I love that, that we are a progressive and inclusive church. Um, my parents, even though I was raised in, um, in a home that wasn't very religious, um, the golden rule was, um, was the rule of our house. And it wasn't until later in my life um, when I became a Christian that I realized, well, this is what it's all about. This is the great commandment. And, um, and I feel like we're not only talking that here, we're, we're also walking that, um, that we love one another as we love ourselves. So I'm very, very grateful um, for this church and for all of you. Anyone else want to share? So you got to share with one another, you know, what it's like to share uh, a sense of gratitude. You start to feel full of gratefulness the more you share it. So uh, my family has a living tradition. Um, we take post-it notes and we write what we're grateful for on post-it notes and we put them on the wall um, in our living room under this, this uh, painting that we have that's of a tree. And so we write down, each of us can write our own and 
I've got stacks of them from years past. This was a couple of years ago. This was last year and you know, the year before that. And I've just got stacks of them. I just want to read uh, just a couple of them. Um, we are grateful for <laughs> football, baseball, soccer, and basketball. Uh, we're grateful for our Starbucks Fridays. Uh, we're grateful for everything my sister does. Uh, grateful for all my toys, uh, for mom's delicious food. For Will's crazy hair, <laughs> for Ailey's height, that was the year that she passed me in um, height, and so we uh, we were grateful for her height that year. Um, Mom's wonderful smile, uh, my warm bed. I know it's very sweet. Uh, Alabama football made it to the to the list one year. I think that may have come every year. Um, this one is really important to me. It says, my help. I wrote that uh, the year that I had thyroid cancer, and um, I could not partake in Thanksgiving dinner that year because I was on a strict diet to get ready for radio radioactive iodine treatment. Um, I was still recovering from a surgery where they removed my thyroid, and somehow I was grateful for my help. Um, uh, the holiday season, everybody's always looking forward to, you know, to the next thing. Um, my friends, who always make me laugh, uh, for pie, thankful for pie. It's not P-I, it's P-I-E. Um, John's laugh and the way he makes me laugh. Will's wit in comics and the peanut comic strip. Yeah, I know that peanuts are a big thing in our family. So that's just a, one of those things we do in my house. And uh, what I'm hoping to motivate you to do today in talking about gratitude is to take seriously how you can not only be surprised on occasion when you have, you know, someone gives you something and you're surprised and you're grateful, but that you can create that experience. And sharing with one another, I hope that you increased in happiness and, uh, and good feelings this Thanksgiving Day in this Thanksgiving week, I'm asking you to come up with some kind of ritual for gratitude. This is an example of what we do. There are so many different possibilities. I'd like to share a couple of them. Uh, one that's highly recommended by gratitude experts, and yes, there are psychologists that spend a lot of time testing and investigating the benefits of gratitude in one's life. They recommend journaling. Now, it can be overboard if you journal every single day. Uh, they recommend, like every other day or a couple of times a week, that you write down the things that you're grateful for. Um, it's also recommended that you write letters. I regularly write letters of gratitude um, because it, you know, it's a gift to that person, but it's also a gift to me. Now, the great thing about both of those two examples is that, you know, when you, like I did with you, when you have one thing that you're grateful for, the more that you reflect on why that is important to you, and the deeper you go, say you get five reasons why that's important to you, the more that you're full of that gratitude and that sense of gratefulness. If you were to write a letter of gratitude to someone, you might consider sharing that to them in person. In my research of looking up, you know, ways to be grateful, one of the most touching examples of a sense of gratitude and how to, you know, keep it as a part of your life was a, a gentleman that for 365 days of the year, he told someone he was grateful. Now, he would regularly write the, the, write the reasons he was grateful and then go to that person and say, I want to share this with you. And that sense of thoughtfulness, that sense of intentionality, it not only changed his life, but changed a number of people's lives. He became, when 365 days was over and he was supposed to be done, you know, telling people uh, thank you for the things that they'd done in his life, he happened to see, on the very last, the very next day after finishing, he happened to see a uh, childhood friend. And he was, um, he was in the car, and he just saw them on the side of the road. 
uh, at a parking lot, and he pulled into the parking lot, and from the car, he asked him to come over, and he told, it was a childhood friend that he'd grown up with that had a disability, and he'd watched all through school, he'd watched that person uh, overcome challenges, um, be brave, uh, endure, um, you know, bullying, and yet thrive. And so he told that guy just how much he had learned from watching him overcome all these challenges in his life. So it happened that his mother was standing right there with him, and his mother started crying, realizing that he had never been told how his life had influenced someone. So this gentleman shared, because of that routine, 365 days of telling people, thank you, thank you, thank you. When he came upon someone out of surprise, he said thank you again. That's how these rituals can be helpful. You know, it's one thing for life to surprise you and you're grateful. But you can actually create those experiences in your life through rituals. I'm asking you to find a ritual and let Thanksgiving be the most that it really can be. Not only this year, not only that one day, but throughout the year. There's no end to the significance of gratitude. Now, our passage was about being grateful to God. And here's the real surprise and wonder of gratitude. The definition of gratitude is seeing the good things in our life and being thankful. When we start looking, we will say thank you to the people in our lives. But there's still going to be so much more that was good in our life that we have no one to thank for. Who do I thank for the rain? Who do I thank for that breath of air that I just took? Who do I thank for life itself? Once we, have, once we, you know, through ritual, get used to gratitude and its presence in our life, we will realize the real expanse of our life and the real need to be thankful to God. So on Thanksgiving Day, in whatever ritual that you do for Thanksgiving, I hope that you will also pause and say a prayer of gratitude.